Imagine yourself at the movie theater. There's the glow of the lights, the familiar smell of popcorn, the sound of the opening notes to a score, and the sight of two other moviegoers dressed as Ghostbusters being escorted outside for starting a fight. Because when there's two grown men and it don't look good, who are you going to call? The police. That's who. There truly isn't anywhere else like the movie theater. And I speak from the experience of working at one for a time. Despite the monotony of scanning tickets and sweeping popcorn, interrupted only by brief moments of excitement, my love and passion for film and storytelling has only continued to grow. I love the movies, and I'm sure you do too. Even if you don't dress up as your favorite on-screen characters when you leave the house, and after the Ghostbusters incident, I'd be okay if you didn't, I think we can all agree that there's always been something special about visual storytelling. From black and white to color, Buster Keaton to Jackie Chan, Citizen Kane to Terminator 2, seeing has always been believing. Even as the art form and the industry have continued to change faster and more drastically than ever before. Specifically, the debate between the artistic and business aspects of filmmaking has been reignited to new proportions in recent years, with the rise of the superhero movie and comic book, then the comic book genre, and an oversaturation of blockbuster sequels and reboots to beloved franchises. Changes to the industry have disproportionately affected the artistic and storytelling potential of film. There's currently a lack of attention towards original and meaningful stories being told, alongside a similar decline in the push for audiences to look deeper into the media most commonly presented to them. But that's not to say that the Marvel and DC cinematic universes are always a bad thing, or that everyone should have a film degree to fully appreciate and understand any kind of film. I am strongly against the exclusivity of film and art in general, which is why I greatly enjoy superhero movies and the role they play as easily accessible and digestible films. And it would also be a lie for me to say that all of these films are emotionless cash grabs void of meaning. For example, Spider-Man No Way Home and Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Dune stood out to me as some of my favorite films of 2021, because despite them being a sequel and a reboot, elements of them that self-proclaimed cinephiles like me are known to criticize, they both make significant and successful efforts to communicate more than meets the eye. What can the character of Spider-Man embody that no other character captures? Why are the world and story of Dune different from every other science fiction epic we've already seen? The people responsible for these movies, that includes actors, writers, directors, composers, even visual effects artists, all understand these questions and communicate the answers to the audiences that stay on the surface and the ones that choose to look deeper. And the reason people, like me, usually like to criticize these films is simple. They're low-hanging fruit and we have no self-esteem. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't sound right. It's because we care about film as art, and the cash grab blockbuster is a threat to that, and to more people experiencing the intentionality of the art form that we love so much. It's no surprise that more and more of these intentionally accessible and digestible films are being released and greenlit by studios each year, while more unique films and filmmaking techniques are denoted as outdated financial risks, and therefore unprofitable. The decline in techniques like practical effects and a lack of stories that are able to parallel their emotion with their excitement is what has turned many films from an art form that takes years to perfect and can be enjoyed by anyone to rushed, unoriginal, and disappointing corporate products that can only be enjoyed under the best or worst of circumstances. For example, where The Dark Knight is a complex narrative of morally and emotionally diverse heroes and villains that have each left their own impacts on individuals and society as a whole, Independence Day resurgence is widely regarded as a cheap recruitment ploy by the U.S. Army after their reluctance to support the original film and makes no attempt at any deeper message beyond that. Another would be when Blade Runner 2049 interweaves the themes of identity and humanity from its predecessor into its more refined vision of a rainy dystopian Los Angeles. It highlights just how bad The Matrix Resurrections attempt at, attempt, attempt at a sequel was to such a beloved series of films wiping away nearly every thematic message that made the original stand out to make room for more meta jokes about Warner Bros. I know I sound harsh 
in my criticisms of these films, and I by no means intend to discredit the creative labor of hundreds that worked on them, but I say this again because I care. And beyond that, I was genuinely excited to see each of the films I criticized here, and therefore genuinely disappointed when they did not live up to my expectations. Universally enjoyed experiences turned to widespread guilty pleasures are simply not the same thing. Originality and patience are what create the most satisfaction in making and watching films. And it's what blockbusters most often lack when they fail to meet our expectations. To many big budget studios today, the word originality simply means to go outside of tried and true formulas that franchises like Star Wars and Marvel have created. And any extra time or patience set on something is simply money potentially wasted. Because of this mindset, Many aspiring filmmakers have turned to independent, independent productions or even crowdfunding just to maintain control of their ideas and projects after being denied so in what is considered a professional environment. It all sounds hopeless that Hollywood studios and producers have denied access to so many of these talented individuals and their ideas, but I personally think it also works to prove the legendary writer-director Quint, writer Quint Tarantino's words that the good ideas will survive. No matter how few of them there are produced or shown to us in theaters, they will be there. But it becomes our responsibility as audience members to find and appreciate them. As audience members and not professional critics of cinema ourselves, the fear is often that there is only one interpretation of intentionally complex stories and that our potentially different opinions about them are simply incorrect or even illegitimate due to our viewership as one of the masses. Beyond creating a stigma behind terms like art house and cinema and A24, this perpetrates the cycle of cash grab media and undermines the idea that different interpretations are essential for any kind of art to progress while maintaining its values. And the truth is that the only incorrect opinion you will ever have about a film is someone else's. And how a story makes you feel personally will always be more important than what Lewis Bloom from Associated Press writes about it on Rotten Tomatoes, or how a user named Patrick Baseman wrote about, ranked it on Letterboxd. So the next time we step into a theater, myself included, and the lights go down and the Ghostbusters are nowhere to be seen, let's all essentially fall asleep during the opening scene and wake up during the credits to ask what happened. Or let's take a moment to think about what it is we're watching, how it makes us feel, and what it might be trying to say, intentionally or otherwise. The decision is yours. Thank you.